a district that had won by uh, been won by President Trump in 2016, Orange County. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us. Uh, let me start with you. I mean, this this quote that NBC News has confirmed here that Pelosi said to some uh, some folks there on Capitol Hill last night, she doesn't want the president impeached, but she wants him to go to prison. What's your reaction to that? I think that emphasizes just how grave these charges against President Trump are uh, by the Mueller investigation, as well as the investigations going on in the Southern District of New York and the Eastern District of Virginia. We have a president who is corrupt, has surrounded himself with corrupt individuals, and they are circumventing the Constitution and their constitutional obligations to provide documentation and subpoenas to congressional committees that deserve to see them. I said your district, by the way, had been won by President Trump. It was won by Hillary Clinton in 2016. That is what I was trying to say. I had a slip of my uh, of my brain there. It happens a lot. Let me let me ask you though about this uh, this deadline that is passing right now. Uh, apparently, your committee, the Oversight Committee, saying these documents uh, related to the citizenship question from Wilbur Ross, from the Attorney General, turn them over by the end of today or face potential contempt proceedings. The deadline is passing right now. You'd indicated that if the administration continues not to respond to these subpoenas, it's time to move toward impeachment. The passing of this deadline right now, what does that do to you in terms of that question of impeachment? Steve, that moves me one step further. I've said all along that we need to draw a line in the sand and give the administration a set number of days. And, and for me, that is the end of June. And if, if the administration does not comply with all document requests and subpoenas from congressional committees in accordance with the Constitution, I believe we are left with no other alternative but then to begin impeachment proceedings to get to the truth that the American public deserves to hear. Let me make sure I understand. So by the, you're saying by the end of June, if all of these subpoenas are not complied with, at that point you say go forward with an impeachment inquiry? Uh, that is correct. And candidly, I don't think they will comply with it. Uh, they've shown a complete unwillingness to do what is right and obligated under the Constitution. And I think if we want to get to the truth, uh, we're going to have to take that action. I do agree with Speaker Pelosi and the leadership that we can, should continue to use other uh, uh, tools in our toolkit, including uh, going through the court system, the judicial system. Uh, but that is a much longer process. And to keep the ball rolling, to get the truth to the American public, uh, we have to look at impeachment proceedings if they continue to take this uh, unwillingness to provide what they're obligated to do. Is there any significance when you say the end of June? Is there any significance in terms of a longer term timetable there? Why you would pick that that point on the calendar? I simply said 30 days and it's been a pro that would be approximately 30 days for me. And I, I believe with this administration that if you don't give a hard date for compliance, uh, that you will continue to be stonewalled. It's one thing to slow walk information and slow walk witnesses. It's another thing to say we are not going to comply with the Constitution. You know, look, the president just got back from England, and I know he is intrigued with a monarchy, uh, but we don't have a monarchy. We fought uh, over 200 years ago to have a democracy that is bound by the Constitution, and we need this president to do what he uh, said in his oath to uphold the Constitution. Do you, do you have any concern? I, I guess a couple questions. Number one, that, that line from the speaker there apparently about saying hey, Trump should go to prison, it shouldn't be impeachment. It, it sounds like she might be making a case there to Democrats that, that basically if you go forward with impeachment, you might be complicating any effort that, that might take place from authorities to prosecute Trump once he leaves office. Do you think there is anything to that line of argument? I think there's enough evidence of criminal activity that whether impeachment proceedings begin or not does not prevent additional action to be taken in a court of law after he leaves the White House. Remember, we have over 1,000 uh, uh, district attorneys who have signed on to a letter, Republicans and Democrats who served in the attorney general's office calling for action to be taken against this president. This is unprecedented to see that type of numbers of people from the legal community stepping forward because of their, their grave concerns about this president. If, if a, an impeachment inquiry is launched, I, I understand officially you don't have to end up having an impeachment vote. Officially, it doesn't mean the president's going to be impeached. But functionally, if Democrats make that decision, if the Judiciary Committee launches hearings, is there any realistic way that does not end with the Judiciary Committee holding a vote and Democrats impeaching and having the votes to do it in the House? 
You are correct that generally when the inquiry has been begun in the past, it has led to uh, a call for impeachment. Uh, but every case has to stand on its own merits. And you have a president who is saying one thing here, which is very contrary to what the Mueller report actually says. And we also have conflict between the attorney general and Mueller as to what has transpired here. It is in fairness to the American public Let's have an open conversation and hearing on this. And if the president would comply with these document requests and these subpoenas, we could get to the truth without having to do an impeachment proceeding. Um, OK, so you're, you're saying you would call for this the end of June, basically start of July. How long of a process do you anticipate here? Because if you look at the last two impeachments that we've seen in this country, Clinton in the 90s, Nixon in the 70s, you had two very different timetables that were at work there. And the Clinton one, not, it was basically around Thanksgiving time, 98, to the early part of February 99. It was very condensed. It was very truncated. It was a couple months. The Nixon one, you were talking, you know, with fall of 73 to the summer of 74 when his presidency ended. Are you looking at, do you expect it would be more of a Nixon timeline in terms of how long these proceedings would go for or more of a Clinton timeline? I'm not going to speak for Chairman Nadler, but for me, looking at it uh, outside in, I would suggest it would be more like Nixon, just a just based on the breadth and depth of allegations and underlying evidence, coupled with the lack of of the president and the administration willing to work with the committees to provide information as they are obligated to do. So there's a lot more digging, a lot more analytics that would have to take place. And, and it, if you are talking about that kind of timetable, that would take you probably, let's say you got your way, start of July, some kind of hearing was launched then, that would take you into 2020, that would take you into the election year. Is there an argument there at all that Democrats should not do impeachment simply because 2020 is an election year and you have an opportunity to make that case to the voters instead of the members of congressional committees and members of the House? Make the impeachment case to voters and tell them impeach them by voting them out on Election Day. There are people making that argument. I can only look at it from my perspective, and I, I, I represent the constituents of Orange County. I took an oath to the Constitution. And I serve on a committee that is supposed to provide oversight of the administration, again, pursuant to the Constitution of the United States of America. And, and I hold those responsibilities uh, with deep regard. And as such, for me, there is a point where if the president and the administration are going to continue to tell lies under oath and or continue to not honor uh, valid document requests and subpoenas, I personally feel I'm left with no other choice. And it's a choice I don't want. I did not come to Washington to impeach the president. I came to Washington to try and get corruption out of Washington, to try and uh, address climate change and health care and gun violence and so many other issues. And unfortunately, the president is forcing many of us to focus on issues that don't allow uh, uh, us to work with the administration in a way to address these issues. Okay. Harley Ruda, Democrat from uh, California. Thank you for taking a few minutes. Thanks, we Steve. appreciate it. And we'd like to have you back here at the end of June. Ask you about uh, where you, what you think of impeachment then, see if anything has changed by then. So consider that an open invitation. Appreciate that. Uh, Thanks. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.